Good morning and welcome to Historical Gamer. I'm your host and today we are playing Ultimate General Civil War. I don't know if any of you played back in the day Civil War Generals or Civil War Generals 2 which was one of my favorite games as a kid. This is similar but it's more uh, like real time it's not turn based and it's it's pretty entertaining. I enjoyed Ultimate General Gettysburg, and this is kind of an extension of that. Um, today we're playing the Battle of Antietam, or Sharpsburg, if you're from the south. Uh, the Confederates tended to name battles after towns, and the Union named them after bodies of water. So you had, in the north, it was called the First Battle of Bull Run. And in the south, it was the first Battle of Manassas after the railroad junction. So Antietam for the north, Sharpsburg for the south. And we are playing as the north today. I played as the Confederates earlier. And it did not go well. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> um, uh, town of Sharpsburg. Yeah, so... This is a perfect example of the fact that often in war, it's not your actions so much as the opponent's actions that result in victory or defeat. And at the Battle of Antietam, it's not to say that the Confederates didn't put up a valiant defense because they, they really did. You know, they, they did the best they could with what they had. But what they had was extremely limited compared to the North. Uh, but General McClellan, who was commanding the Northern Army, he always thought that he was outnumbered. Ugh, let's skip all this. Okay, so Hooker's division will advance south. So General McClellan, he always thought he was outnumbered his entire career, which, you know, he gets a lot of flack for that, but honestly, it's better than the alternative. Uh, never thinking that you're outnumbered, always thinking that you're, you're the superior force uh, is also not great. It's probably the worst of the two to be honest. Uh, but then again, I'm a, I'm a cautious person. But the Union forces were just so overwhelming at Antietam. And unfortunately, you know, McClellan, he just, um, he attacked piecemeal one at a time and there were really three different stages of the battle it was uh, the northern flank and the center and the south around the bridge the famous Burnside's bridge and so really uh, the Confederates were able to move around supplies it was kind of the opposite of the Battle of Gettysburg, where in this instance the Confederates uh, had the interior lines and they were able to shift men and supplies and cannon around, whereas the, the Union had a much bigger distance. Uh, if they wanted to reinforce anybody, they had to, to move, you know, men and supplies around in greater areas area so the confederates had that advantage but the union had such a, a numerical advantage and a lot of that was because many confederates had gone home uh, for the harvest this battle was fought in September and Lee's army was half its strength basically they thought when they went into Maryland that they would get recruits uh, but they just didn't get as many as they 
they thought they would. I think at that point a lot of Maryland Marylanders who had stuck around um, just didn't want to get involved. And this area of Maryland is very sparsely populated, even to this day. If you go to Sharpsburg today, there's nothing there. It's like literally in the middle of nowhere. But this is not where Lee wanted to fight. He basically had his back to the river. Because famously, McClellan um, found one of Lee's orders. Uh-oh. We got some uh, Confederate unit here. Got the Stonewall Brigade. But they're severely outnumbered. Oh, this is not good. What are you doing? Fall back. A uh, hooker was a a core commander at this point. He later took over the Army of the Potomac. But, uh, he conducted the Battle of Chancellorsville, and that was pretty much it. We want to gain control of this hill because it'll be good for artillery. Uh, the Confederates probably have artillery up there. Uh oh. Come on, guys, what are you doing? gain control of this hill. Nicodemus Hill is this uh, objective. We want to get our artillery up there. The good thing about the Union in this campaign is that they they just have such overwhelming numbers that you can pretty much, you know, conduct a battle at your leisure. I already have control of the hill. Move that artillery up. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Let's bring some reinforcements. 
reinforcements up here. So the uh, the Union troops actually liked uh, General Hooker. He really helped reorganize the Union Army uh, after the Battle of Fredericksburg. The Union Army was just in shambles. Uh, there was just like a third of the army had deserted pretty much or was uh, AWOL and a lot of enlistments were coming up people didn't want to like re-enlist it was just a big mess but Hooker was actually a, a good uh, organizer and he introduced the unit symbols for the different corps And he did a lot of good things. He got the uh, the mail uh, delivery regular. He increased the troops rations. So the men actually really liked him. Uh, unfortunately, he got a concussion during the Battle of Chancellorsville. And so some people said he was drunk, but uh, he actually was literally disoriented. So he kind of got the short end of the stick. He probably honestly was a pretty good general. So we've taken control of this hill and it was not as, uh, it's not as difficult as I thought it would be. I guess they moved their artillery. This unit has got to be... Uh, they're totally flanked, you know? What are they doing? get some supplies over here. You always want your cannons to be supplied because they run, de run low on ammunition quite a bit as you could imagine. Oh, there's the Confederate artillery. Is there a hill over here I can use? advance here. This isn't good. We don't want to leave these guys exposed. I know the Confederates are getting reinforcements here. Uh, let's pause under cover. Because I know Hood's division is coming in soon. Here they are. Texas Brigade, Waz Brigade. In the Civil War, you always wanted to mass your fire. And didn't want your flanks exposed so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here so what you don't want it's a matter of ratios right so what you don't want is one unit with three more units, like, firing from different directions, right? You want to mask your fire. These guys are running well on ammo. It's 
kind of strange that the Union would only have one supply wagon. That's a little unrealistic. Let's try to move them into that cover. Sunken Road is important, obviously. Reinforcements are arriving. Want to keep up the pressure on the flank. Supplies are coming. have uh, I, I like this because you can actually select whole divisions at a time you weren't really able to do that in uh, the Gettysburg version of the game so let's have his division move over let's go through the woods here Bring the second core up. That's not good. We want to drive that artillery out of there. Definitely. Okay, keep up the pressure here. Here's the sunken road. I think we're getting very close to taking Dunker Church. This is definitely not what Dunker Church looked like. I wish they had been a little bit more accurate about that. <laughs> I'll post a picture in the video. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard just to render, like, the actual church. It's a small, like, white wooden building. So that was just kind of lazy on their part. I don't know if that artillery is really doing much over there. Let's bring it over here.
Keep moving forward, boys. First division. I mean, you can see they just, the Union just had such an advantage of manpower. How they couldn't take advantage of that is beyond me. And we still got troops over here. Well, we got some cavalry over here. Let's send them out. We got Dunker Church, no surprise there. Uh, these we can actually limber can limber these up and then we can move a little faster no I didn't want to do that They're not listening to orders. See if we can limber them up here. Limber. The Confederate defense of the center was really incredible. Longstreet basically bluffed his way into having the Union Army think there was more men there than there was. No, 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 no. What are you doing? I mean, the Confederates are just totally collapsing over here on the flank. It's not even, it's not even a contest right now. I'm just going to sweep them, sweep them off this hill. Let's get some uh, melee action in here.
how could how could they lose that melee? That's ridiculous. They have like three times the number of men. the charade Sweep around the flank. Come on, guys, you're embarrassing me. Long Street. Mostly out flank right now.
get these guys up here. <laughs> Gibraltar Brigade. Do something about those cannons. This is not good. Come on, guys. Hurry up. Double quick. some supplies over here. These cannons are proving to be very stubborn, but there's no way they can hold out for much longer here. Burnside coming in on the southern flank. Yeah, we got it. And the battle is pretty much over at this point. Burnside was probably the most useless general on the Union side. He really was an embarrassment. There was kind of a strange situation towards the end of the war because Burnside commanded a corps but he was technically the, a higher rank than Meade. So he operated independently and it was very hard to get him to do anything. What are these guys doing? Right, 
this this battle is almost over. Who needs ammo? Go to Antietam today, it's a beautiful battlefield, especially in the fall. Kind of getting our men bunched up here. Let's get you over there. Speed this up a little bit. They're just surrounded. Let's 
do it. Town. The town is ours. I wish there was a little bit more variety in the dialogue. Regain control of that. That can't be right. battle is won as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how they regain control of this over here, but... Yeah, there we go, victory. That was pretty much a route. Yeah, this is, a, this is a great game. Uh, thank you for joining me, and we'll play more battles in the future, uh, and hopefully you all stick around.